there's a global movement on, on, on many fronts. Um, there's a global movement on issues of governance. Uh, there's a global movement, uh, and these are, I think, good global movements, about um, adjusting to the reality that institutions have to be uh, aligned to the pain points that we have uh, in society. And there's also a tremendous shift that's taking place where technology is driving change in much quicker paces. And so, you know, as you look at the whole issue of diversity, um, you realize that uh, you have to change the structure of the governance structure of your institutions to be more relevant to that changing times. Um, it's not just about gender, although that is important. Um, I think uh, the Philippines is a, an interesting place. I was asked at business school many years ago. I graduated in the 80s. Uh, but people turned to me as, a, as, a, as, a, as an Asian and, and, and said, you know, uh, uh, issues of, of gender must be complicated in your country and I was quiet for a little while and I said you know I don't think so I think we have a matriarchal society in the Philippines where women are you know very much accepted as, as both leaders caretakers and, and and usually they're the most responsible people in in in, in the household in Philippine society and so I'll never forget when uh, when uh, President Aquino was our, our first female president in the Philippines, uh, she went to Paris, I think, and she was asked, you know, you know, what's it like, you know, to be a, the first female president? And she was quiet and said, you know, you're the first person to ask me that question. Nobody in the Philippines has, has asked me that. And I think it's important also to, to not look at gender as a, as a static thing. What you're really trying to bring to a board is, is the right mix of people. Uh, but there is no doubt that, uh, that a mix of, 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 of men and women uh, working together creates a different uh, dynamic. Um, you know, I went to an old Boyle school, uh, you know, when I was in high school and uh, I had a good time, but, uh, but the dynamic of a group of boys uh, at the time being together is quite different to the kind of environment my children have been in, which is a, a mixed school uh, of boys and, and girls working together. At the very basic level, the, uh, the respect that one has for, for members of the opposite sex, be you female or male, you know, changes when you give that kind of exposure. Uh, I saw the dynamic in, in my high school and, and, and I decided for my children to send them to mixed schools, not to, to, to an all-male school. Um, and uh, I guess if you sort of extrapolate that to a more senior level and a more mature level, uh, you get a different dynamic, uh, uh, different points of emphasis, uh, uh, different levels of empathy. We haven't gotten it right in our group of companies. Some companies have uh, more gender uh, diversified uh, boards than others. Uh, but I do like to think across the group at the executive level, um, you know, there's a really very good balance uh, between men, men and women. I would say across our workforce, it's, uh, it's sort of divided roughly about half. You know. Moving beyond gender, um, I think we're also dealing at a time when um, you know, there are so many shifts and changes that issues of, of age, issues of exposure, issues of industry knowledge, they're coming to play in all industries. I don't think there's an, any industry that stayed static. Technology, for example, is, is shifting all industries in one way or another. It's important to have in the board people that are comfortable with that, uh, number one. Number two, it's nice to have board members that are comfortable with change, um, you know, uh, uh, sometimes you can get a board member who's overly conservative and that's not a bad thing, but you've got to balance that out with someone who's comfortable you know, with change. Because change is, is just a fundamental uh, a paradigm that we're dealing with uh, now. Um, at the same time, you have to have board members that are interested in, in, in a long-term, I guess, success of the institution, not just the short-term success. Um, legacy is important. We see ourselves as stewards, uh, I guess, of an institution. Uh, it's had longevity. It's uh, been linked in many ways to the economic history uh, of the country. Um, and that's an important component of how we view it. But sometimes you need the short-term thinkers to, to give a sense of immediacy to the way decisions are made. If you can get that combustion uh, to take place, and if as a chairman uh, or as a leader of that board, you can create a, a, a dynamic uh, tension uh, that is constructive, that leads to people thinking out of the box, allowing people to speak freely. Um, and uh, those feelings come from a mix of, of, of genders, of ages, of backgrounds. Then you start to create the kind of dynamic that a board needs to be able to help, I guess, a management team think through uh, their issues. Um, and sometimes it doesn't have to come from the board itself, uh, just bringing in outside individuals to sometimes give advice. But more than anything, you have to create an environment that is open to listening to new ideas. And, and uh, sometimes we all have a tendency, I would say even myself, a cognitive bias, sometimes, you know, when you're hearing something that doesn't quite resonate because you have a mindset that is aligned, 
you tend to sort of shut down and then you've got to correct that as well. You've got to say, look, you know, good ideas come from all over the place. There's no such thing as a, as a bad idea and you have to allow them to flow. Uh, so with the move on, on diversity and boards, there also has to be in the leadership an openness to encouraging a discussion that is a little bit different, that can be a little radical, that can be out of the box and, and sometimes out of really listening uh, to these things, not just you know allowing them to speak, but really listening, you start to get the kind of combustion that's necessary for creative thinking. I'm an introvert and I'm a great believer that there is no specific leadership type uh, that one needs. And I say this to young people when I talk to them. Um, uh, and uh, to a certain extent, I get my strength from, from, from being alone. But, you know, um, I think the, uh, the, the, the catalytic quality of bringing a group of people uh, together and solving a problem together is very powerful. And some of my best ideas have come in dialogue with others. And sometimes that dialogue has to be in an informal setting rather than a formal one. So I try to create forums uh, in my leadership style with people where we are in informal settings rather than too structured a setting where people tend to clam up and, and be a little bit closed. But generally, I, uh, I, I, I like to work with teams. I like to empower people. And uh, I like to work with individuals who have um, a sense of independence. And I like that. Um, the smarter they are, the better, and, uh, and I like people who challenge me as well in my thinking, um, and um, that's the way I like to work. Mm. I think you have to find a mix of points of view. I don't think there is any right or wrong way uh, to address a problem, uh, but I'm a great believer that if you get the right combustion of people um, at a board level and allow them to speak freely, um, and are people who are also comfortable listening and understanding, who are not combative by nature, or just have a set point of view. Uh, if you find that right mix, then you get uh, answers and solutions that come out uh, that uh, can lead to management uh, becoming far more insightful and, and maybe not having seen an angle that they didn't see. Companies that don't do that, I think, might get stuck in a certain way of doing things. And uh, at a time of, of, of tremendous changes in, in the way consumers uh, buy products and services, in the way people look at behavior, in the way values are looked at, uh, those institutions will remain a little static and then very quickly might become irrelevant. And I think relevance is, is a very important characteristic of any institution these days. If you, do, if you don't remain relevant uh, to the consumers that, that, that you're dealing with, to the communities that you're part of, um, and if you lose your relevancy, uh, then you begin to lose as an institution. So uh, companies that don't look at uh, diversity and don't encourage uh, uh, open talk and, and don't challenge itself, um, I think over the long term will not succeed. And, and history is probably lit littered with examples, not only in the corporate sector, but in countries and all kinds of different organizations. I think the role of boards have changed in, in very exciting ways, uh, but we have a responsibility now to bring the right dynamic into it. And then as you lead the board and create discussion within it, you've also got to create the right environment uh, for people to be able to speak out. It's useless uh, to have a diverse board and then nobody say anything or, or not be able to contribute. So creating an atmosphere that creates that, uh, that dynamic, I think, is, is absolutely critical. And, and that's an art in and of itself. It's not a science. <laughs>